This is an old photograph from roughly 100 years ago. It consists of a father and his son in the back of a horse-drawn cart. Today, we're going to restore and colorize this photo to add new life to this old relic. We start our journey in Photoshop. In this section we have the initial scan of the photograph and we're cropping it down to make At the end of this process, hopefully our final uh, photograph will be the same size and resolution as the scanned in photograph so it can be reprinted off and compared directly to the original. We have to not only crop, but also rotate the scan to make sure it's horizontal and ready to start editing. I'm using an outdated version of Photoshop. This is what I'm used to, and you could also use GIMP, which is a free image editing tool, if you need an alternative. Firstly then, we're going to add a contrast layer to add some more pop into the image. This is because the old photograph is rather faded. We repeat this a few times to bring out the lost details. Next, we're going to go through with the clone stamp tool and get rid of some of these creases and cracks that have formed on the photograph over the years. We're also going to eventually extend the photograph into these edges that are left blank, making sure our photograph fills the entire frame. When using the clone stamp tool on bricks, you have to make sure that the bricks you're cloning are lined up with where you're cloning it to. This is so there's no obvious artifacts left in the edited image. Often using a lower transparency on the clone stamp tool can help you get a much better, softer effect than using a hard brush. Here you can see us clone stamping existing areas of the image into the white areas that resulted from the rounded corners of the photograph. If you don't get it right the first time, Go back and try it again.
a step I'd advise for any sort of uh, photo restoration is having an upscaled version of the original photograph. By doing this, you'll have a, not only a photograph you could use to edit further in the process, but you could also downscale the upscaled photograph, getting a significant noise reduction in the process. I use Gigapixel AI Upscaler, as I like how it works with faces and foliage. Also have a lot of control of how over how the upscaling works. If you want a free alternative, uh, Waifu 2X, search it on Google, uh, can work just the same with maybe less, slightly less good results. The main aspect here to look for is the reduced noise. Although the upscaled faces are nice, when downscaled, you're not going to have all that detail back in the image. Bringing that upscale then over to Photoshop, you can then add it into your uh, project. You can see uh, the upscaling works on some areas, makes some areas look a bit weird. So using the select tool, select the image, copy it and paste it over the other image. And then free transform it to fit the same resolution. This is probably going to need some fine adjustments. Take your time, you'll get in the end. Now if I toggle between the two, you can see how it smoothed out the face and it made the facial details pop a bit more. It's also got rid of that ugly noise. It's a good idea to overlay an edited version of the original photo with much higher uh, dynamic range and contrast over the original image and then adjust that overlay until you have an image that you want to progress forward with. To do this uh, contrast work I like to use a tool called Raw Therapy. It's a free image editing software, mostly for picture finishing, but it has a wide variety of luminosity tools uh, for use, which is perfect for what we need to do here. Mostly we're increasing, increasing the contrast, but making sure the whites aren't too blown out. We're also raising the level of the blacks so there's more detail in dark areas. We'll then put this into Photoshop, Control C, Control V, and overlay it over the original file uh, photo. You can then adjust this as you like to get the desired effect. In my case, I played with different overlay settings to 
to get the desired effect. As you can see here, it brings out a lot more contrast in the image, helping every element in the image pop a bit more than it did before. always add a mask to your overlay layers and then paint out areas of the overlay that you don't want in other areas. In this case on the right side of the image I decided that it would be good to not have it as bright as the overlays were making it and over on the left as well you can see me painting out areas of the mask. Mostly the darker areas get this treatment, leaving the enhanced lightened areas the same. We also go through here and fix up the horse's hair. It's had a bit of a double exposure effect from the original image. We're also making sure the faces aren't too blown out. This is a thing we'll return to later. Picture Colorizer is a free tool you can download online. It offers different services, mostly free an online browser, such as enhancing and restoring old images. What we're using it for today is the AI Colorize tool over on the left. Simply add your photo and hit Colorize. This does a pretty good job. Unfortunately, there are areas of the image which haven't colorized correctly due to AI faults. Print screen this so you don't get a watermark and put it into Photoshop. Copy this and put it over your original picture and resize it to fit. Again, this could take a while to resize correctly.
Don't be afraid to start over if you mess something up. When working with a colour overlay like this, I always like to add a slight blur. This helps get rid of any colour artefacts left in the AI upscale. There we go. In this case, I add a hue and saturation layer to make sure the colours are as bright and vibrant as I want them to be. As I said earlier, elements of this AI colorization won't end up exactly as you like it. To adjust this, simply click on the colour overlay layer, use your eyedropper tool and your paintbrush tool, and go into areas of the image which have the wrong colour and select the areas of the image which have the colour you want. Simply paint out the areas of the wrong colour. This is probably the most time consuming step of the whole process. You're essentially repainting the entire image. But at least you don't have to worry about luminosity. The AI colorization is a great tool to base your colors from, but don't be afraid to use unique colors from the palette. Also, if one area of the image uses a certain color, it's a good idea to use that color throughout to give an overall matching composition to the photograph. I use a graphics tablet for this, but you can also use a mouse just as well. Simply match what colours you'd expect from real life and paint the colours in here. It's a good idea to use photographs as reference. Often when it comes to animals or trees, I have a reference image to draw colours from. But in this case, the AI colorization did a good job.
the finishing touches, we're mainly referring to more focus on luminosity and colour and small tweaks. You can do this in raw therapy or even Photoshop. A new tool I've been using to do this is Luminar Skylum, or in this case, Luminar Neo. It really takes out the complexity of adding finishing touches to an image and simplifies it down. There's nothing really that we need to do to edit our image any further. We need just here and experiment through presets. But the main things is enhancing the image by drawing the viewer's attention to the main subjects, which is the father and the son. To do this, I quite like to add a vignette, focusing the subject of the image between the two characters. The vignette will then focus uh, the viewer's eye towards that area of the image. Also, the lower area of the image is naturally expected to be darker, so it has an be added benefit of fitting, fitting the scene. To also draw the viewer's gaze towards the centre of the image, you can add an area of light. But you don't want to overdo it too much. Keep tweaking to your happy river. For this image, I also added some sun rays. Again, it's not something you want to go over the top with, but a few sun rays can also help enhance the centre of the image by making it lighter in comparison to the edges, drawing the viewer's gaze. When it comes to adding sunlight, you want to make sure it comes from a logical spot. Coming from directly overhead, like I've placed it here, makes sense as there's a farm building directly behind them. This is something that is a lot easier to do in Luminar Neo than perhaps any other software, although overlays in Photoshop or GIMP could also achieve a similar result. Finishing up then, we bring this export from Luminar over into Photoshop and add it on top of our previous photos. 
I made some minor edits in post afterwards, like lightening faces, but that's all. Enjoy the time-lapse of how this photo was restored.